Hello from me and Finlag. He's a real wriggler. Um, it's a very stormy evening and uh, I'm going to read a little bit more from my notebooks from 1996. I've just been having a look through and although I wrote a lot there's not very much which is suitable to put into a YouTube video but there's a couple of semi-interesting things. So, here goes. Sunday the 25th of February 1996. I don't want to see humans destroying the earth but unfortunately it is happening. Superpowers seem to need to create such intense pressure that the whole structure of life must surely be close to the close to breaking point. I'm thinking mainly about nuclear fission energy and the frenzied digging up and burning of our planet's fossil resources. Above all, if everyone could realize our plight and understand what is happening all around, then all the down and Finlag is really, <laughs> he's a real wriggler. Um, I'm going to start that sentence again if I can find the place where I was in the book. He's licking my hand. Um, that's just strange, isn't it? You've completely put me off. You, completely. Right. Above all, if everyone could realise our plight and understand what is happening all around them, all the destructive machine-like processes could be slowed down and the shattered and bruised natural world would begin to mend itself with the help of a more aware human population. The alternative is the annihilation of life as we know it, probably within the next ten human generations. I don't know why I thought ten human generations. Um, you know, we're talking about three hundred years. Um, I don't know where on earth I got that figure from. Uh, I would say that if we're going to blow ourselves up with our technology, then it's most likely to be within the next century, you know, or within this century. Obviously what I'm reading now was written last century. Um, the strange going on in the mind of a 20-year-old. Anyway, the alternative is the annihilation of life as we know it, probably within ten human generations. But it need not be so. We are still very much alive, and sensible thoughts are being broadcast to the amassed populations more so now than thirty years ago. Um, I think that's a little uh, nod to the fact that the environmental movement didn't uh, used to exist uh, you know, prior to about the 1960s. But uh, this was written in the mid-90s and uh, there was a sort of increasing environmental awareness. Thursday the 7th of March 1996 I borrowed a book called The Vortex, Key to Future Science, which describes the most plausible explanation or theory as to the science of life. Okay. Supernatural and paranormal occurrences are only mysterious and incredible to those who don't understand the full spectrum of physics, chemistry and biology. Okay. This theory does not replace existing science, it illustrates a framework which fills in the gaps. I have not yet finished it. Okay, I don't... I, don't, I didn't write down who that book was by, and I only vaguely remember uh, reading it. Anyway, on the Sunday the 10th of March, 1996, um, I have finished the Vortex book. It was interesting. I felt to an extent that it was on the right track. Unfortunately, some of it was hard to grasp and went over my head. The assert, presumably that means there was more than one author, they assert that physical matter is energy which comes into being through consciousness. We are all part of God, therefore we all play a part in the continuing creation. There are many higher levels of consciousness, 
functioning at faster speeds of light. Um, faster speeds of light. I've heard these kind of arguments since then, and um, I have no idea what these things are based on, really. Um, as far as I know, there is only one speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. Um, that is the speed of light in a vacuum. Anyway, back to the book. Apparently we are all here using the Universal School to learn to be gods. Okay... The book, however, misses the fact that the human race is slowly but surely damaging the physical world, as if it didn't matter. Apparently good and evil are all parts of the game of life. On higher levels, all thoughts are reality. On Earth, it is not so fast. All very interesting stuff. Um, I have heard uh, that kind of argument since then as well, that uh, it is only on the Earth that um, we have solid physical matter and that the world of ideas is some kind of a different existence where thoughts themselves become reality. But anyway, it's, uh, it's not so much complicated stuff, it's just strange stuff. I really don't know what it's based on. Anyway, Thursday the 14th of March 1996. Yesterday one stupid bastard committed the most pointlessly heinous crime in this country in recent years. He wandered into Dunblane Primary School and shot wildly at a class of five-year-old children, killing 16 of them and their teacher. He then blew his own brains out. What is the world coming to? I expect that right now he will be having a rough time in hell or some other damn place. If my memory serves me correct, that was uh, Hamilton. I think Thomas Hamilton. Um, that was quite a shocking thing to have happened. I remember working at the time um, near Inverness and hearing about this on the radio and being quite shocked. Um, of, of course, many similar uh, mass murders have happened before and since, probably a lot more since, um, where somebody goes crazy with a gun and then shoots themselves. Horrible, horrible thing. Um, but anyway, that was... That must have been on the 13th of March, 96. Takes you back. Now, I've, that is actually the end of that particular book, so I'm going to now jump to this one, um, and I'm going to finish up with 96. I didn't write very much in 96, which would be of any interest um, and worth putting into a video. So just a short little bit here from the 30th of March, 96. I'm about halfway through Living Energies, which explains Victor Schauberger's research in great detail. I'll need to add here that um, Victor Schauberger was an Austrian forester and inventor who is probably most well known for um, building log flumes um, in an area of thick beech forest. Um, he devised a way of transporting the cut logs from the forest to the sawmills downhill on uh, on these water flumes. Um, he had some quite unconventional ways of um, understanding the flow of water and uh, a lot of people didn't think these flumes would work because freshly cut beech logs are heavier than water and should sink but he had little deflectors in the sides of these flumes which uh, created a vortex and the logs were able to travel down the center of the water flow. But I do remember um, he wasn't at all happy because his log flumes worked so well that the forestry companies uh, cut down all the forest in that area and he was very much against clear felling large areas. 
anyway, um, I'll just read a little bit more from here. It is very complicated and technical in parts, but very good. This is the book. Uh, incidentally written by a guy called Callum Coates, who I've recently found out um, has been interviewed and uh, can be seen on YouTube. Um, if I can find them again, I'll put the links down there. If they're not there straight away, then I'll put them when I find them. It explains how free energy can be utilised by power stations at sea whose fuel is seawater. I sincerely hope that someone builds the necessary equipment, then we can drastically cut back on the wasteful burning of fossil fuels. Now that's... Um, until I read this just now, um, it's something I'd almost completely forgotten about. I, from memory, I think the idea is that um, the salt concentrations in seawater are different um, between the surface and much, much deeper. And I think the idea was to have some kind of pipe work um, which made use of the different salinities and somehow this could be turned into energy. I can't remember exactly how. Anyway, what I also wrote was a very inspiring book which I shall go back to again and again until I understand how it all works. The book does stress the vital importance of reforestation on a global scale. Obviously that's something I've picked up on um, and still think is very important, reforestation. Um, Victor Schauberger um, apparently, or allegedly, um, made a number of inventions. Um, one of them was called, I think it's the repulsin, or the repulsine, um, which uses uh, strangely shaped turbines, which supposedly are able to, once they're spinning up to a certain speed, continue to spin and put out more energy than is put in. Um, I recently made a video about uh, well, not not in any detail, but just asking the question: Why is there no clear, unambiguous evidence to support the claims of people who say that free energy or over unity over unity um, energy machines do exist? Um, I I do remember reading that book twice through. Um, but haven't done so for at least a decade. Um, I'd be interested to go back to it, because now I have a much better idea of um, what is and what isn't possible, according to the laws of physics. Anyway, from this little guy, Finlag, who doesn't like to be picked up, um, and me, bye for now. <laughs>